This is the face of a man who has lost everything. A man who has suffered. A man who could put even Subaru to shame. This is the main character from Monster Musume, one of the most terrifying anime that I have ever watched in my entire life. The series follows a man called... A man called... Kimihito, a man who needs to take care of a bunch of attractive monster girls as part of a cultural exchange program. Now first, this may seem like a typical harem ecchi series that only degenerates would enjoy. Every episode, a new monster girl is introduced for this poor soul to take care of, and it is heartbreaking to watch. These girls have no regard for this man's well-being. They eat all his food, make him do all the work, throw him around like a ragdoll, and almost kill him every single episode. But literally, the first thing that happens in the entire show is that this guy wakes up and almost dies within the first five minutes, getting crushed under the weight of the two things he loved the most, barely escaping with his life. Even the artist couldn't decide whether to give him hentai protagonist eyes or normal eyes, so he just gave him something in between and called it a day. But worst of all, this guy has been placed into a situation that for any straight man would be pure torture. There is a rule for this program that says that if there is any sexual activity, if he even so much as lays a finger on any of these girls, then he goes to jail and they get deported. And yet, knowing this, these sexy monster girls proceed to expose themselves, throw themselves at him, tease him to the point where he has gone far beyond sexual harassment. The entire premise of this show is literally designed to give him the biggest pair of blue balls on earth. And it takes all of this man's willpower to not give in to temptation, to stay strong. He may not have a personality, but he has my respect. But do you want to know who doesn't have my respect? This idiot! Agent Smith is a lazy, incompetent bum who can't seem to do her job and this is all her fault. She's supposed to be the coordinator to all this, to make sure that everything is happening the way it's supposed to be happening, to make sure this guy doesn't get hurt. But she doesn't! She just sits on her ass singing Kumbaya while the main character gets strangled to death in the corner. The main character didn't even ask for any of this. He didn't sign up for anything, this was her mistake, he wasn't supposed to do any of this but he does it anyways being the chad he is. And yet, Smith has the audacity to let more of them come because apparently handling one isn't enough, he needs an entire house full of them. He even goes the entire series struggling to pay for food. And at the last episode, he's straight up run out of money. They need to go around and beg for scraps. And when he finally puts something together by himself, he serves it to everyone. And then Smith just invites herself in with even more monster girls! And after this poor schmuck watches all his hard work be eaten right in front of him, Smith just casually mentions that he could have listed it as an expense and they would have reimbursed it to him later. Uh, and why didn't she mention such an important detail beforehand? She forgot. Ah! The show presents all this like it's a desirable situation that this guy somehow likes being surrounded by sexy monster anime girls, but I know the truth. In reality, this isn't a pleasure fantasy. This is a horror anime in disguise. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Welcome to the anime community. A place where everybody has a waifu and nobody has a laifu and shows like this one are actually celebrated. Monster Musume is the trashiest anime that I've ever seen in a very long time, and that's exactly why I like it. This isn't going out and fine dining at a fancy restaurant, no, no. This is going to your local McDonald's and getting an ice cream cone, because I like ice cream. I fully understand that this isn't the highest quality anime with the deepest story and characters, but I still enjoy it because I'm a filthy degenerate who likes anime titties. Speaking of anime titties, let's talk about the one who doesn't have any. Poppy. She had missed potential. For those of you who don't know, Poppy is the second monster girl introduced, and her entire personality is literally just that she's a bird brain. Which is a fun idea and concept, except for the fact that the show does nothing with it. I felt like out of all the main cast, aside from the main character, she was the one who had the most one-dimensional personality. And while everyone else had some form of development, she's just kind of there. Which is a shame, because I usually love characters who behave like total dumbasses, so logically she should be one of my favourites. Plus, flat is justice. But here, there's literally nothing more to her than just being dumb. There are so many ways they could have gone about this to make her more interesting and likable. Like, it would have been way better if she had at least some form of common sense and was able to act like a functional human being. She could still be a bird brain, but it would be more like she just has her moments where she just has a brain fart, which would be a lot funnier in my opinion and make her way more likable. Plus, this would make her feel way more like an actual character rather than a character type. And also, instead of introducing both her and Centauria in the same episode, which is what the show did, give them each their own episode. This 
this way, we get to introduce each of them without it being rushed, and we get time to explore both of them properly. I don't really think I'm being unfair with this, since I feel like every other character, except for the main character, got some level of depth to them. Like, even if the show just hinted that there's more behind Poppy than what she seems, then that would have been enough for me. It doesn't need to be super deep or complex, I'm just saying there's potential for something here. But then again, I suppose that's just my writer's brain over analyzing everything again. Maybe I just don't like the fact that she acts like a child so much because it makes that goddamn popsicle scene ten times worse. Now, I'm not gonna talk about all the characters, since that would make this way too long for what was supposed to be a dumb April Fool's video. But despite Monster Musume not being super deep or complex, I must congratulate it for knowing exactly what it wants to do and doing it well. You see, I don't actually think that Monster Musume is terrible from a writing standpoint. It's incredibly simplistic, yes, but it does understand its target audience and does enough to keep things interesting for all 12 episodes. And that's more than you can say that some other shows are able to do. There are legitimate themes and life lessons in many of these episodes, which was a surprise, but a welcome one to be sure. The classic formula of introducing a new monster every episode was fun at the beginning, but I felt like it could have very easily gotten repetitive and stale if it just kept repeating it over and over again. But instead, it managed to keep things fresh, have new stuff happening, and just because there are new characters introduced, it doesn't mean the show forgets about the old ones. If anything, it's thanks to that that we get completely new dynamics between the old characters and the new ones. Even during the last few episodes, where the cast at this point is huge, nobody really feels left out, and all the characters are extremely memorable. Even the random background characters that appear for like two minutes, I still remember now. That's pretty difficult to do, and it is low-key impressive all things considered. But there is one more thing that it does that I consider to be the most impressive of all. Throughout the first bunch of episodes, despite them being monster girls, it's still a mostly normal ecchi with much of the focus being more on the girl rather than the monster. I didn't really understand anything then. I was innocent. But then episode 6 rolled around, which cranked things up to a whole new level. In this episode, amongst many other wild things, we get Poppy laying an egg, and most importantly of all, Mia shedding her skin as our main character helps her peel it off. Slowly. And I think it was then, when I was watching this, when I truly realized the moment where I truly understood that anime was a mistake. A glorious mistake. The greatest mistake that humanity has ever come up with. This is what restored my faith in people. Monster Musume may not be a masterpiece, but it is art. Actually, you know, you, you know, you know what? No, I don't think you truly understand. I need to get an expert on the line. Someone who's way more cultured than I am. Hey, Brandon, you need me to talk about Monster Musume? Yes, I... Wait, how did you know that? You know what, never mind. I need you to convince these people that Monster Musume is art. Can you do that? Can I do that? Are you seriously asking me if I can do that? Not only does it have its... <clears throat> plot, but Monster Musume is also a series about acceptance, and accepting people for who they really are. When I originally watched Mon Musu, I was pretty against the idea of Monster Girls, but slowly, over the course of that series, my opinions began to change. First, there was Mia, who I originally disliked. The fact that she had a tail really put me off, but then I saw how caring of a person Mia really was. She could be a bit overbearing at times, but she has a serious dedication and truly cares about Kimihito. Soraya then came, and again, I was really put off by her. I couldn't stand her bottom half. But after getting to see how klutzy and cute she really was, she started to grow on me. This process then repeated for every girl. It got to the point where I actually started liking their non-human characteristics and the quirks that they get from them. Mia has the tail that is sensitive and she gets embarrassed about. Ragnara has those beautiful eyes and gets drunk off caffeine. Which, fun fact, real spiders actually do. Mero loving the little mermaid tail because she's a mermaid and so on. Even the girls who don't get much screen time are still super intricate. Zombina is a super playful girl so she uses her limbs to prank others. Doppel being so used to others wanting her to turn into someone else, being a shapeshifter and all, she is super surprised and just speechless when being asked to be herself. The attention to detail in all the characters is insane. It was so good, I even decided to read the manga, and I never do that. And even there, the trend continues with all new characters, and even with the ones we already know. They even do a MILF arc! I mean, they meet the girl's parents and learn where they used to live and their life before the program. These girls aren't monsters, they're people, just like us. And then there's the Lamia Orgy arc where we learned there are no male Lamias so they kidnap men to have huge orgies with them.
What? In the far mark where all animals are monster girls, but they still need to be milked. Ah, uh, okay, that's enough, thank you. The ending of the season was truly magnificent. Not only did it randomly double its animation budget, but the themes, comedy, the plot, and the plot were all top tier. They went all out for the finale, and these last few episodes are the perfect summary as to what Monster Musume is all about as a whole. My only real problem with it was that it finished. When I finished the last episode, all I could think was, that's it? But surely there has to be more to this divine magnificence. Why is there no season two? Maybe I will read the manga after all. So if you're looking for something new that will ascend your penis to another dimension, or just want something fun to watch with the whole family, Monster Musume has it all. Go ahead and give it a watch. I'm sure you won't regret it. And whether you like it, or in denial that you liked it, there is something that I'm sure we can all agree upon, and that is... That has a banger opening. Oh, okay. yeah.